from the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to him at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you have come from God as a teacher, for no one can perform the signs you do unless God were with him. Jesus replied, I assure you, unless someone is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. But how can anyone be born when he is old? Nicodemus asked him, Can he enter his mother's womb a second time and be born? Jesus answered, I assure you, unless someone is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Whatever is born of the flesh is flesh, and whatever is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not be amazed that I told you you must be born again. The wind blows where it pleases, and you hear its sound, but you don't know where it comes from, and you don't know where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. How can these things be? asked Nicodemus. Are you a teacher of Israel and don't know these things? Jesus replied, I assure you, we speak what we know and we testify to what we have seen, but you do not accept our testimony. If I have told you about the things that will happen on earth and you don't believe, how will you believe if I tell you about the things of heaven? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him will have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world that he might condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Anyone who believes in him is not condemned, but anyone who does not believe is already condemned, because he has not believed in the name of the one and only Son of God. This, then, is the judgment. The light has come into the world, and people love darkness rather than the light, because their deeds were evil. 
For everyone who practices wicked things hates the light and avoids it, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But anyone who lives by the truth comes to the light, so that his works may be shown to be accomplished by God. Hey, what's up, White Flag? Welcome back to Midweek. Go ahead and take your Bibles and turn to John chapter 3. That'll be, that's what we're reading this week, and that'll be what we're studying uh, for tonight's message. Let me first go ahead and say this. I know that you probably read the title of the series of the message tonight, and you said to yourself, is a Christian and a born-again Christian, are they not the same thing, right? Uh, a Christian and a born-again born Christian, is that not the same thing? And the, and the truth behind that is yes, a Christian is a born-again Christian. But we live in a culture where people say something and they don't have to have, they can say things with their words, but their, their, their heart and their minds and their actions don't have to back that up. Um, they, they claim to be a Christian, but yet they're not surrendered to the gospel. They're not surrendered to the advancement of the gospel. They're not surrendered to uh, advancing the kingdom here on earth. They're not surrendered to Christ. They're surrendered to themselves. And so, yes, Unfortunately, I think that we have to separate the two. There are people who claim to be a Christian, right? Quotations, they claim to be a Christian. And then there are also people who are born again believers. They've been empowered by the Holy Spirit. And so our topic tonight, our study tonight is going to be focused on that. David Platt says that four out of five Americans claim to be Christians with only half of those actually going to church. The majority of those people do not believe in the Bible. They don't believe that the Bible is even true, but instead they think that works can get them into heaven. And so the reality is that if these statistics are true, and we see these statistics all in America, man, especially here in the South, man, it's, not, it's almost like we got this mentality that if you live in the South and, and you live within at least five to ten miles of a church, that must mean that you're saved. If you attend a vacation Bible school when you were a kid, that must mean you're saved. If you pray this prayer and repeat it after me, and you were baptized, then that must mean that you're saved. Let me tell you something, student. That doesn't mean that you're saved. Just because someone says that you're saved doesn't mean that you're saved, man. Like This is why it's so important that we're teaching you Scripture, and, and you're not going off the opinion of what someone tells you, but you're going off of what, what does Scripture say? What does God say in the Word of God? And so, uh, in His Word. And so, um, I think this is, this is what Jesus is trying to describe in, in John 3. 3. Um, this is an incredible verse. It's kind of the main text that we're going to focus on. John 3, 3 says, Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now, when Jesus says truly, truly, what he's trying to get out here is that, hey, this is really, really important. All right, so when you see those, when you see the term like that, when it says truly, truly, when Jesus says those things, he's what he's about to say is, hey, hey, you need to listen to me because what I'm about to say is a very big deal and it's very, very important. I think anytime Jesus speaks, it's a big deal, but it's almost like Jesus is almost like trying to grab our attentions here. He's trying to grab Nicodemus's um, uh, attention and say, listen, what I'm about to say is really, really important. And here's why. Because Nicodemus was banking on his heritage to get him into heaven. Nicodemus was banking on the fact that he was a Jewish leader and he was thinking that because of his Jewish background, that that was what is going to help him uh, receive his reward in heaven. And if you go back to Luke chapter 4, what we talked about uh, last week, when Jesus says these things and he talks about, hey, it's not about, it's not about who you are, but man, it's about your faith. It's about your faith in, in your repentance in Christ. Man, those guys wanted to throw him off of a cliff. And so in the same way, Nicodemus is seeking Jesus out in the night. Uh, he's coming to find Jesus. A lot of times we, we think about Nicodemus being a coward uh, for coming to Jesus at night, worried about what people are going to think. Um, and I'm not going to lie, I've thought about that as well. Man, but as I was reading this week, I was just reminded of the boldness of Nicodemus. Man, maybe Nicodemus, you know, Jesus was a popular guy. He was a very popular guy. And so Nicodemus, Nicodemus probably wanted to carve out intentional time so that he could spend time with God. So give him some credit here that he's trying to spend time with, with Jesus because he's trying to discover who he is. 
He, you know, he's seen, if you, if you go back to chapter 1 and chapter 2, you're going to see some things in John about some of the incredible things that Jesus has done. Um, and so Nicodemus has heard of these things. He knows that this stuff's coming. That, that he knows that Jesus, there's something different about Jesus. And so he seeks Jesus out. Uh, but Christ, what Christ is wanting to assure Nick is that the only way to heaven is not about your background. It's not about all the good things that you do. It's all about being born again. And that's what, that is the question. And so as, as we read that, as we've been reading that, as we've been reading this this week, Something that's been uh, that's been kind of just going through my brain. I think the Spirit's been teaching me is very similar to Jewish culture. How they would just assume that because I'm I'm in this Jewish realm that I'm going to receive my reward. I wonder how many uh, Americans. I wonder how many people in the South. I wonder how many of you students who are watching this video. You're banking on your salvation. Because of what happened at Vacation Bible School, because of what happened uh, at a at a conference or at a camp, or or the fact that maybe your mom and dad go to church, and so you think because mom and dad go to church, I must be a believer as well. Um, we're we're banking on a lot of different things, but the reality is, is we've never had a true heart transformation. We've never truly repented of our sins. I'm not saying you can't do that at a VBS or at a camp or anything like that. I'm not saying that that's not possible, but I'm just curious, man. There are characteristics and people, when they are born again, they are, they are transformed. They are new. They're no longer self-motivated, but they're empowered by the Holy Spirit. And so let's, let's look at some, some characteristics. How do you know if you are truly born again? How do you know if you're truly born again? Number one, do you have to be begged to serve God? Like, do you have to be begged to serve God? Do you have to be begged to read your Bible? Do you have to be begged to read your Bible or even make disciples? Do you have to be begged to go to church? Suda, if, if, uh, if, there's, if there's no motivation, there's no motivation behind those things, there's probably a great opportunity for you to question, like, man, am I truly been born again? Francis Chan says that when we become a Christian, we are no we no longer have to be begged to serve the Lord, begged to read our Bible or to make disciples because we are manifested, which means we are empowered by the Holy Spirit. If you go back to Acts chapter 1 verse 8, it says that you will receive the power when the Holy when the Holy Spirit is upon you and you will be my witnesses. So when you receive power from the Holy Spirit, there's it's, it's no longer your motivation, but it's now the Holy Spirit that lives inside of you. And so, man, look, here's the deal. There's there's times that, that I may go a day, and I man, I I don't I may I may not read my Bible or I may not spend as much time in it as I, as I need to. But man, the Holy Spirit is constantly reminding me of that. It's constantly saying like, man, uh, it's constantly saying, man, spend time with the Father. I mean, it's so important to spend time with the Father. And then when I find myself uh, going to sin, find myself falling into a, a sin temptation, the Holy Spirit is constantly saying, hey, that's not what God's calling you to do. Hey, you're better than that. Hey, don't fall into that trap. God, it's, it's constantly, right? And so that's the power of the Holy Spirit that lives inside of us. And so students, if you have to be begged to read your Bible, if you have to be begged to go to church, if you have to be begged uh, to do this and there's no motivation behind that, I'm going to ask you, I'm going to say this uh, in the best way I know how, and it's not me saying it, it's going to be Jesus here. Um, man, is there, is like, are you truly born again? Or have you truly made a heartfelt transformation to follow Christ? Is there the motivation? I'm not talking about, hey, I like going to church because I like to hang out with my friends. No, no, no. Is there, is there a desire to want to grow, to study the Word of God, to grow in your relationship with Christ? And then also allow the things that you're taking in to overflow in your life so that you can make an impact for kingdom advancement in the lives of your peers and your families. Man, it, when you're empowered by the Holy Spirit, it's no longer about you. It's no longer about, hey, how, what can I do to, to advance my cause? But it's, now it's about, man, what can I do to advance the cause of Christ? Do you have that living inside of you? Do you have that drive? Do you have that motivation? It's not something that you're born with. It's something that is that is that only is received by the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's when we are born again believers. That's what happens. Number two, do you continue, do you continue in sin over and over without feeling any guilt? Do you continue in sin over and over without feeling any guilt? 
Francis Chan says that if you are not of the Holy Spirit, then you are serving the devil. 1 John chapter 3, 9 says, No one who is born of God will continue to sin because God's seed remains in them. They cannot go on sinning because they have been born of God. If you make it a practice to continue to sin, if you make it a practice to continue to sin, then you are of the devil. And so that's not me saying this. That's not, that, that's not the quote that I got from Francis Chan. That's Jesus. That's what the Bible says in 1 John. If you find yourself continuing to live in this constant emotion of sin and continue going back to this sin, then you are probably not a believer. You're probably not born again. Um, so I want to also, I want to take some, just carve out a little time and talk about like, what is sin? You know, like I think sometimes we think of sin as like really, really bad things. It's all the really, really bad things. And we're always constantly looking at everybody else's stuff. But man, sin is also when you, uh, when you lie. Sin is also when you cheat. Sin is also when you deliberately talk about others. You deliberately slander others and you deliberately put people down. It's when you constantly allow pride and ego to take over. It's constantly when you're disobeying your parents. It's constantly when uh, you're intentionally and you're skipping time with God. Those are things that are sins. I think we get this whole thing. We think that we're not as bad as what we really are. But man, sin separates us from God. Sin is what killed a man and what put a man on a cross. And so sin is a big, big deal. And here's the deal. I'm not saying that you have to be perfect. Scripture doesn't call us to be perfect. But man, we are called to live righteous. We are called to grow in our relationship with Jesus. And if there is no Holy Spirit that lives inside of you that's sitting there saying, hey, you don't need to be watching that. Hey, you don't need to be listening to that. Hey, you don't need to let those things filter through your mind. If the Holy Spirit's not coming through your brain saying those things, man, there's got to be a giant question mark. There's got to be a giant question mark sitting there asking the question, like, am I truly born again? If you have no guilt over sin, if you have no guilt over the things that you're watching, if you have no guilt over the slander that comes out of your mouth and trying to put other people down instead of showing love and compassion to people, then student, I'm telling you, you're not a born-again believer. You're not a born-again believer because when you are powered by the Holy Spirit, I'm not saying that you live a perfect life, but I'm also saying that, man, things are different. When you read in Scripture about people who are transformed and they accept Christ, man, they're completely different. And Scripture even talks about it as almost in the, in, the, in, the, in the way that an old you literally dies and a new you is raised up. It's a completely new you. There is no old going back to the old way. No, it is a new you. So do you find yourself constantly going back to sin? Or do you find yourself, finding yourself, maybe you, you, maybe you find yourself in sin, but the Holy Spirit is constantly there reminding you and you remove yourself. You, you push that stuff away and you run to the Father. That's what we're talking about here. That's the characteristic of, a, of someone who has been born again. And then lastly, let me ask you this. Has this quarantine caused you to walk away and leave your spiritual disciplines? Has this quarantine caused you to walk away and leave your spiritual dis disciplines? John 6, 6, 6 says, Many of Jesus' disciples turned back and no longer walked with him. And this is right after Jesus uh, was speaking about um, the way to how to have eternal life. Man, if you find yourself like in this season, if this in this crazy season, if you find yourself being disconnected, and here's the I know that it's not the easiest thing in the world, but I also know the power of the Holy Spirit and the craving that it has for the Word and the craving that it has for the teaching of the Word and the fellowship with other believers. I know the power of the Holy Spirit, but if you find yourself disconnecting yourself, saying, I I think I'll just find a way not to be a part of D groups this week. Or I, I think I just won't watch the sermon this week. Or I, I just I just I'm going to find ways to this. And all of a sudden, look, I, I've told my D group this uh, for a couple of weeks now. My prayer is that I am different when I come out of this quarantine season. Like when I walked into quarantine, I want to look different when I come out. I want to be closer to Jesus when I come out of this season. The, that, that's the characteristic of a born-again believer. The question is, is, student, can you say the same thing? Can you say that I, in this season, I have grown closer to Christ? Or if you can you say that, man, I, you know, I really hadn't watched any of the, 
any of the videos, I've, I'm probably not even watching the video right now, right? Because uh, according to our analytics, nobody's even got to this point yet. Um, but only those who are truly wanting to dig are the only ones that's made it this far. Um, maybe, maybe you, you know, maybe you, if you find yourself not not studying the Word, you find yourself um, not having desire to to grow in your relationship with Jesus, uh, to be around other other people wanting to to have those same goals and those same mindsets. To, to if you don't have the desire to share the gospel, the good news of what Jesus is doing in your life to other people. There's probably a giant question mark that needs to stand there, saying, am I truly a born-again believer? Students, we have the opportunity to grow every single day, to grow every single day in our relationship with Jesus. Are we taking advantage of that opportunity? If you've turned away from your spiritual discipline, if you have turned away in this season from your spiritual disciplines, are you very similar to the people that are in Scripture when Jesus starts talking about eternal life and they're simply walk away? If your spiritual discipline was just hanging on the fact that you came to White Flag into a building because it was cool or because there was a lot of people in there and you thought it was cool to hang out with those people, if that's what you're banking on, that's not salvation, that's not Christianity. I don't know what that is, but the reality is, is that's not what that is. Being a called a born-again believer is, man, like, I do those things. I go to church, but, man, like, I spend time with the Father on my own. Uh, I, I don't have to. It's not about just... Uh, the church building, but it's about, man, I'm living this on a regular basis. I'm, I'm following Christ alone when no one's watching, only God, all right? I just don't put it on when other people are watching, man. I, I believe this. I, I'm following Christ uh, 24-7 all day long, right? And so, so, so how do I apply this? Maybe you're sitting there right now and you're saying, man, I don't know if I'm truly born again. I don't know if I'm a truly born again believer. Let me just say this, students. Let me say this, and I don't care if you've said this a hundred times. I don't care uh, if you've um, maybe you're trying to figure out what this is really all about. Um, let me also say this too: that you shouldn't be in a, in a season or in a place where every time you hear someone explain how to be saved, that you say it just to make sure that okay, I just want to make sure I get it right this time, or I just want to make sure that that maybe God heard it this time. No, no. We, um, every time I hear that, I don't have to constantly, every time I hear someone sharing the gospel and sharing about what it means to be a follower of Christ, I don't sit there and have to constantly remind myself or make sure and check that box and say that with a little prayer to make sure that I'm doing that. Like, I've already done that. I've already, I've already become a child of the King. All right. I've already done those things. And so like, I'm now moved past that and I'm now growing in my relationship with Jesus. I'm not back there. And so Students, it's not one of those things where I'm constantly praying this prayer, hoping that it works this time, hoping that it works this time. I'm saying the same prayer five years in a row, going to straight to stand every year, saying the same prayer every time. No, no, no. But here, here's, for those of you who are sitting there and you're like, man, what does it mean? Like, what do I have to do to become a follower, a born-again believer? Number one, repent. Repent and ask God to forgive you of your sins, your wrongdoing, uh, ask God to control your life from now on. Uh, and here's the deal. Even if people, even if you think, man, well, what are people going to say? What are people going to think? They thought that I was a Christian so long, and now they're going to see that, I'm, that I really wasn't a Christian. And now I've got to, look, quit worrying about the opinions of others. Quit worrying about people. Focus on Jesus. Focus on the fact that Jesus died on the cross for you, and he doesn't care about your past, but he wants to see what happens to you. He, want, he wants to see something incredible happen to you now. He wants to forgive you of your sins. And so repent of your sins. And it, maybe it's a short little prayer. Maybe it's just a prayer saying, God, I repent of my sins. Will you change my heart? It doesn't have to be this long, extravagant prayer, man. It's just a heartfelt. Here's the deal. We can say a lot of words, but they may not mean anything from the heart. I can say things all day long and it may not mean anything in my heart. But if you truly believe that, if you truly believe that, then repent. Repent. Say, God, I'm sorry. God, if would you please forgive me for my unrighteousness, God, and please forgive me. I believe in what you did on the cross. I believe that your sin, that, that you died on the cross, covered that for my sins. And then number two, it's all about now the power of the Holy Spirit living inside of you. It's about change. And here's the deal. It's not about you having to do all this work to change. A lot of people think, well, I've got to get, I've got to get my life straight before I can come to Christ. I've got to get some things in order to come to Christ. Pastor Mark always says, you don't take a clean car 
into a car wash, right? You take a dirty car to a car wash. And so in the same way, like, man, uh, when you become a born-again believer, there is a change that's going to happen in your life. You're going to start putting those old habits away. You're going to start becoming a new person. People are going to start looking at you like, man, like what's wrong with you? Like what's different about you? There's something different. You're not talking the same way. You're not listening to the same things. Man, that you've got this different feel. And here's the deal. That change is not about the power of you. That change is the Holy Spirit that's living inside of you. That change is God inside of you, living through you. And so now there's this change. There's this desire to want to read scripture. There's this desire to want to grow in your relationship. Man, there's this desire to share the joy that you have with other people. And so there's the change that happens. And so there's a repentance, and then there's this change of heart. And students, if you've prayed that prayer for the very first time, I would love to talk to you about what that looks like now. We'd love to help disciple you. Take your next steps. I don't care how long you've been in the youth group. I don't care if you're not even in the youth group. Maybe you're an adult watching this. And you're maybe you're a parent and you're watching this. I don't know. All I know is that we want to help you take your next step. And there is no shame about how old you are or what people think about you. Man, forget people. It's all about Jesus. Grow in that. And let's let's talk, connect with me. Talk to me. Send me an email. Text me. Call me. Whatever you got to do. Let's help you take those next steps. Now, now something I want to do here, I want to ch- shift a little bit right before we close. Um, what about some of you who are living this out? You know that you're a born-again believer. But how do we reach those people who claim to be Christians, and yet we know that they're not following Christ? We don't see fruit. We don't see a surrendered life. How do I show that love to them? How do I show that they need Jesus and that they need assurance, that they need salvation? How do you tell someone who claims to be a Christian that they're probably not a Christian, right? Um, and so here are some practical ways, some practical steps on like how can we, um, how can you um, help someone who who thinks that they're saved, but the reality is they're probably not. Um Number one, if you have a note, I hope you're writing this down. Number one, pray earnestly for an awakening in their lives. Pray earnestly for an awakening in their lives. Now, this isn't a casual prayer right before I sit down and eat, like, God, I pray for JoJo. I just pray that they'll start loving you, and then you start eating. Man, this this is one of those prayers that I believe that is on your hands and your knees, and you are fervently knocking on the doors of Jesus and saying, I, I am going to bug you to death about this. You pray for that person by name. You pray for them daily. You pray for them hourly. You, you, you're you constantly praying for them. It starts with prayer, not a casual prayer like, oh, I'll pray for them, and then, and then, and then like a week or two or, or even a month later, you think about it again, like, oh, yeah, I need to pray for that person. No, no, no. This is something that you're praying for. Maybe even you're fasting over. You're praying for this person by name. God, would you reveal yourself to this person? Would you help this person realize that they are lost and they don't know you as personal Lord and Savior? God, would you intervene? God, would you open up their hearts? Would you open up their minds, God, to hear you, Lord? God, they say that they claim you, but the reality is, God, is they don't bear that fruit, God. They don't have a surrendered life to you. God, would you intervene and help them to see, God, that you are so good, that you're more than just something on Sunday and Wednesday, but, God, you are so, so good, that you're more than just a prayer or the big guy upstairs or just a prayer that we prayed in VBS, but, God, that you are so much more and you have an incredible plan for our lives. God, would you help those people? Man, pray for those people. I will pray with you for those people. Number two, fold them into your life. Fold them into your life. And not the other way around. Um, not necessarily the other way around. You set the agenda. You set the plans. Um, help help them to see, to see you tasting and seeing that the Lord is good. And so as you are doing life, man, help them to see that. So fold them into your plans. Number three, invite them to church. Uh, or maybe even invite them to watch online with you. Uh, create a time where y'all are getting together. Uh, if, if mom and dad's cool with it, hang out together. Like, hey, can, can we watch this? Can we watch church together? I got to watch church or I get to watch church. Uh, can we do this together? Or invite them to midweek. Have those conversations. A lot of times people will come to church if they're simply invited. So invite those people to come and be a part of your church. Or even I'll even go this far. Maybe even go to their church. 
I know a lot of times we think that church is all about uh, my church, our church is better, da da da. It's, it's, man, it's the church of Jesus. And so, man, like if you have the opportunity to connect with someone, go to their church. Go to their church and spend time with them and, and, and allow them to taste and see that the Lord is good through you. Uh, number four, speak regularly of your spiritual disciplines and habits. Speak regularly. I mean, talk about your time in the Word with them. Talk about how you're spending time with God. Because if they're claiming Christ, well, hey, a characteristic of someone who is a Christian is they're spending time in the Word. And so eventually there might come a place as you're praying for them and as you're talking about the joy that's inside your heart and your spiritual disciplines, they may sit there and look at you and say, man, like, I'm claiming Christ, you're claiming Christ, but the reality is, is like you look a little bit different than me. And so, man, talk about your spiritual, talk about the fact that when, you, when you're praying, talk about when um, you're, you're, what you're, how you're journaling and what that looks like when you're reading Scripture. Man, have those conversations, talk about those things. Um, and then lastly, if, if you've done all those things, right, and you feel like none of that's worked and none of that, you know, like, I, I'm doing those things and none of that's worked, um, if you have built trust with this friend and you have you have earned the right to speak into their life, then I think you have the opportunity to just ask them and just say, "Hey, are are you are you assured of your salvation?" Or or maybe even ask them, "Hey, could you share with me your testimony?" Um, Again, you just can't, um, you know, this has got to be something that's earned. you got to earn this opportunity. you got to earn this uh, right into these people's lives. Um, they got to know how much we love until they're going to hear what we're going to say, right? And so uh, let me just encourage you, man. It just might just take something on your part just to be bold. You're praying for boldness in yourself and just go to, these, just go to that person and just ask them that question. Like just say, hey, can I hear your testimony or point out something in your life um, that, that how God is changing you and then ask them those questions as well um, and ask them how are they growing in their relationship with God um, and, and, and make sure that before you enter that opportunity, that conversation, man, spend time in prayer. Spend time with God. Um, this is not something, again, this is not, this is not easy. Um, we're dealing with an enemy. We're dealing with someone who wants to still kill and destroy. We're also dealing with someone who likes to confuse people. And he likes to make people think that they're Christian because of something that they've done. But the reality is that they've never truly repented. And that's probably one of the most difficult things to have to do is try to convince someone who thinks they are that they may not. And look, look, uh, I, I, this whole study, please don't get me, don't confuse me in this. This whole study is not trying to convince you that you're not saved. It's not trying to convince, get you to convince others that they're not saved. Um, but man, like, there's just something different about someone who has been transformed by the gospel. It's evident. It's, it's noticeable. There's something different about them. When God enters someone's life, man, there is something incredibly different about people. Like, it is night and day. It is death to life. It is completely different. And so as we conclude, as we close this uh, study out, um, the, the point is, is that uh, whether, uh, whether you're a born-again, whether, you know, um, there is a difference between a born-again Christian uh, and, and someone who claims to, to be a Christian. Um, and and there, there is an incredible difference, and it happens in, it's all in the characteristics. Uh, it's all about how they approach life. There is an incredible difference and I'll close with the words of Jesus in John 3.3. 3, he says, Truly, truly, I tell you that you must be born again to enter the kingdom of heaven. Students, if I can help you in your next step in your relationship with Jesus, I don't have all the answers. I don't have everything figured out. But I would love to help you take your next step. Until we, until we meet again.